Without any further delay, I'll remind our stations we will be running over so that we can accommodate the master. That's right. He writes in the Marina Times when it comes to music, it comes to movies, television, comic book movies, strange, weird Japanese films that are all subtitled part of some obscure literary series. He loves it all. I don't know how he does it. Giants, Dubs fan. He comes and goes on a rainbow. The great Michael Snyder, everyone. He's in the house, as the kids used to say in the 90s. Uh, Michael, welcome, welcome. Can sure. somebody? Can everybody punch the same buttons at the same time so we can't really get them? Michael, it's, yes. It's welcome. June. I mean, it's June, it's June is busting out all over. I mean, and and speaking of busts, why isn't Donald Trump arrested yet? I, I I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Well. The clock is ticking. Uh, greetings to you, Mark Maven of the microphone, to Kim Queen of the North Bay, to Albert King of K-pop. And to Tony, I have no title for him, but... Uh, wow. He... Thanks, Tony. Yeah, that was very good. Though. Albert, thank you. You really went around the horn. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, so I well did. done, Michael Snyder. Uh, yeah. It's um, it's June. What's happening June? in the Marina Times? Do you have a column in the Marina oh, Times this month? I have two uh, columns that people can check out, one of which is about a couple of movies opening next week, um, one about Salvador Dali, and one about the uh, attempt by the British government in the 1980s under Thatcher to censure gays and lesbians and the human impact on that. That movie's called Blue Jean, uh, the Dolly movie's Dolly Land. It's uh, right there on the cover of the Marina Times. You can read the review uh, in the Times at marinatimes.com if you're not on Russian Hill or the Marina. And there's a piece on summer in uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco and how the climate differs so radically. Look but at I you wanna... with two columns. I love uh, it. Of course. I do want to say it's Pride Month. And uh, because it's Pride Month, I am proud to be an ally to the LGBTQ plus community. And I will be making an appearance in the uh, crowd tonight. Uh, at uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, tomorrow night at the Booties Lady Gaga versus Beyonce mashup party in honor of uh, Pride, and uh, that'll be at the Cat Club, and uh, we're we're thrilled. Uh, and you know, do get you, out there. Uh, Michael Snyder, uh, uh, Gay Pride Month? Do you uh, take your cornerstone look beret? And make it a rainbow colored, or do you can leave the kind of navy blue, dark well, gray? I actually keep it as it is, but I am a rainbow baby. I am a living rainbow. That's yeah, that's the way I go. look at you it. You are a living rainbow. It's true. Uh, okay, where are you? Uh, where are you starting with these? Uh, with the reviews, I guess Spider Man is pretty big, isn't it? Coming out, I, I am, of course, um, comic book guy, only slimmer and handsomer. So, this is actually <laughs> what can I tell you, man? This is Best my meat Spider Man ever. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. um, I'll give you a quick uh, little thumb note about um, these two Spider Man movies we'll be discussing. There's a new one and one that preceded it. Um, at Marvel Comics a number of years ago, they decided they had to freshen up their heroes for a new generation of readers. So they came up with an idea, the Ultimate Comics universe, where they introduced new versions of classic heroes like Spider-Man. And they introduced uh, a kid named Miles Morales, who actually becomes Spider-Man in that universe. They introduced a version of Nick Fury, who in the regular Marvel comics was a 1940s era World War II hero who somehow uh, drank longevity serum and was still with us in the, uh, you know, in the latter part of the 20th century, et cetera. They introduced a black version of Nick Fury modeled on Sam Jackson. And what ended up happening is that version was the um, cinematic version as well. And now they folded him and this kid, Miles Morales, into their regular universe when the Ultimate Comics went uh, belly up. So we have these movies, and there are very good reasons why the uh, superheroic feature film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse won the 2018 Academy Award for Best Animated Feature Film. And they are happily all on display again in the super scintillating sequel opening today spider-man across the spider-verse oh, both of these movies both really snappy witty richly plotted and genuinely moving scripts endearing characters and fearsome antagonists and 
Mark, gloriously gorgeous, comic book inspired visuals coming at you in a kinetic storm of styles, uh, heretofore unseen in mainstream animated features. And it's all in the service of the story, which concerns Miles Morales, a smart and good-natured Brooklyn teenager from a Black and Hispanic family. Miles, whose intellect gets him enrolled in a high school for advanced education, has a dedicated cop for a father, a loving mother, and a favorite uncle who just happens to be on the shady side. And unlike his dad, Miles has a healthy respect for New York's wall-crawling, web-shooting, crime-fighting, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, secretly, as we all know, nerdy, noble, science whiz peter parker but miles is shockingly bitten by a radioactive spider the same way that peter was and marvel comics history repeats as a second spider powered new yorker is created if you haven't seen into the spider verse i don't want to spoil it nor do i want to lessen the surprises and thrills of the sequel suffice to say that a bad guy tampering with high-tech machinery in the pursuit of i presume ultimate power uh, rips a hole in the barrier between alternate universes, threatening them all, while revealing that some of these other dimensions have superpowered spider-centric champions, some similar to Peter Parker, the original, and some wildly different, and they all team up with Miles to stop impending doom. I mean, great character. Uh, uh, do I do I need to see Into the Spider-Verse? It sounds like I do, or should. You, you do, see. you do. And Into the Spider-Verse features Nick Cage and uh, John Mulaney among the voice actors playing respectively Spider-Man Noir and, are you, are you ready? Peter Porker, the Spider-Ham. Hilarious. So the latest <laughs> movie takes that whole idea even further as Miles is enmeshed in a multiversal crisis that may be of his own doing, revealing a veritable army of spider folks and potentially leading to personal and world-shaking tragedy. A lot of the wonderful voice actors from the first movie are back, starting with uh, Shamik Moore as Miles, Haley Steinfeld as his other dimensional crush Gwen, Jake Johnson as an out of shape, but still earnest version of Peter Parker from another dimension, and Brian Tyree Henry as Miles' dad, and you get Jason Schwartzman as the loony reality-threatening villain, The Spot, and Oscar Isaac, Issa Rae, and Daniel Kaluuya as other notable Iraq. Wow, they just pack editions. these movies with uh, yeah. with stars. Uh, yeah, scintillating is a ding word. So is kinetic. Here, uh, I'll, I'll ding a heretofore. Um, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll ding enmeshed, and I will ding of. I will ding veritable. All words I use in normal conversation, so screw you. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, the veteran cartoon director, Joaquin Dos Santos, and two co-directors do this monumental job of keeping so many sparkling balls in the air, and they bring the ingenious screenplay by Phil Lord, Chris Miller, and David Callahan to life, along with the help of the actors and the stunning stylized character renditions that genuinely provide emotional punch. And by the way, Lord and Miller who executive produced this were the uh, clever boys behind the unexpected animated hit, the Lego movie and its offshoots, uh, which is good for them. All those spider verse. Oh my God. These movies swing much higher and comparatively speaking, leave those Legos in the dusty basement toy chest. I got to warn you, like I said, seeing into the spider verse should be a prerequisite. Um, but uh, right. across the Spider Verse, which clocks in at two hours and twenty minutes and breezes by, ends on a cliffhanger. Yep, a third Spider Verse movie is on the way to wrap up things, and it can't get here too fast. It is uh, a, a joy to watch for those of us who love this sort of thing. Spider Man in theaters. The Spider Man Spider across the Spider Verse. What's next, Michael? Well, let's see what we have here to uh, kind of cleanse the palate. <laughs> Jump scares and game performances aside, the newly released horror movie The Boogeyman is pretty thin stuff uh, with a less than memorable monster plaguing a high school girl and her younger sister in the wake of their mother's death. Uh, Dad, played by Chris Messina, is a therapist and his daughters seem to need one, but he's too busy to take care of the kids since he's seeing patients like a guy who brings an evil entity into the house the boogeyman of the title, who incidentally is not unique or visually memorable enough to really create that all-important dread found in great fright flicks. Uh, as I understand it, by the way, this was adapted from a Stephen King story, not one of his novels, 
and I can't imagine it's among his best. There is so little to it that I thought it might have actually been adapted from one of King's post-it notes, uh, maybe from an expletive when he stubbed his toe. I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. there seemed to expletive be certain, is a dang word. Yeah, yeah, there seemed to be certain similarities with a, a much much better movie about a broken family preyed upon by something hiding in their house. That would be the Babadook. Uh, and, you know, Mark, I kind of wish the Babadook showed up early on in this film and kicked the boogeyman's ass. That I would have liked. <laughs> the boogeyman, directed by Rob Savage, is a serviceable diversion if you can play it for free at home on a streaming service and, you know, fall asleep to it on the couch. I mean, uh, with a name like Rob Savage, I expected something more savage. Uh, wait, wait, I have another genius idea. Uh, down on his luck, 1950s jazz pianist has a psychotic break and starts killing people with his piano bench. Beware the boogie woogie man. Now, uh, I just need financing. I, Never mind. Uh, what? Yeah. yeah. The boogie man's in theaters and... Uh, and as a I'm loser, you think. You think, wait for it for streaming is what you would say. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, What's okay. next? Uh, 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 oh, great boogier. Back in the 90s, the filmmaker Abel Ferrara made uh, really good, gritty films about the seamy underbelly of society. King of New York, Bad Lieutenant, and Ms. 45 were standouts. Well, it's 2023, and Ferrara has made Padre Pio, a turgid movie about the historical figure. Wow, who, turgid who, is such a dang word. It's disgusting. Yeah, go whose ahead. Whose name is the film's title, Padre Pio, played in an all-too-modern fashion by the woefully miscast Shia LaBeouf, is a tormented priest who lives in an Italian village that's experiencing terrible post-World War I economic travails. So with the help of the local Travails. cops and, yeah, and town officials, the area's rich landowners are exploiting the newly returned veterans of the Great War who are desperate for work. They're confronted by brutal working conditions for piddling pay. So some of the returned Italian soldiers are espousing socialist or dare I say communist ideas. And the establishment power brokers are dead set on crushing the upstarts in a rather mm, fascist manner. And yeah, uh, it's the beginning of Il Duce's right wing movement, black shirted thugs and all. Uh, and an election Padre Pio is going to uh, defend the community against it? Well, you know what? There's an election. It's going to decide the next ruling party, and it throws the entire town into a frenzy. And now uh, this guy, Padre Pio, Currently venerated by the Catholic Church, by the way, in reality, this guy, self-flagellating for much of the movie, attempts mm. to bring peace and understanding, or at least the word of God, to those around him in the village. But tragedy is inevitable, as is a viewer dozing off. I mean, despite the, <laughs> the volatile political conflict in the town, that this should generate some excitement. Uh, the, the segments with LaBeouf as Padre Pio are brutally dull when they're not clumsy, stripping any potential momentum in its tracks. I mean, I don't I think do, you should apologize for how you feel. Oh, wow. I, I, no, yeah. no, dude, I, I do like some of Ferrara's earlier movies a lot, but I was PO'd <laughs> by Padre Pio. Oh, uh, PO'd by Padre Pio. I love a, it. it. Come on with a guy. It's yeah, in yeah. Italian with subtitles, but in no way oh. is it. A spicy meatball. Oh, uh, anyway. my God. Well done. I will, uh, espousing is a ding word. Venerated, uh, as you know, is a ding word. And I will ding self-flagellation as well. And, uh, and I don't Pio know that... Is in, it's in theaters. You know, I want to just wrap up with a quick... I don't know self-flagellation has ever been said on this show before. So bravo for that, Michael Snyder. Go well, ahead, yes. You, you, do, you make an example of it on a per regular uh, yeah, basis. Yes, you're right. But... Watching the show is self-flagellation, come to think of it. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to... Um, you know, time is ticking. So I just want to get quickly yes. to a TV uh, recommendation. And it's one that I think that both you and Courtney are going to absolutely love. It's called Bad Sister and it's on Apple TV, and this mm -hmm. thing swept or, or cleaned up at the BAFTA Awards in the UK, uh, which uh, there's BAFTA for movies and BAFTA for TV. The BAFTA TV Awards um, definitely honored Bad Sisters, which you can watch here in the States on Apple TV, and it's uh, somewhat created, co-created by Sharon Horgan, the Irish actress uh, who people might know from the sitcom Catastrophe, and she plays one of five sisters who are dealing with one of the sisters' 
awful, awful husband, uh, played by the actor Klaus Bang, who I loved in the BBC Dracula, and he was in the cool movie The Square. He plays this dick of a guy, and the sisters, four of them, are worried about their fifth, and so they decide to take action. And oh, all I can tell you is... Yeah. It is really, really good. And it is absolutely, like I said, something you and Courtney are going to gobble up. Ten episodes, Apple TV, Bad Sisters, Sharon Horgan. I tip my beret to you, ma'am. That, that is. Uh, and in the chat, those who have seen uh, Bad Sisters seem to agree with you. They loved it. Uh, good stuff. Well, uh, Michael, you said a lot. And you said it well as usual, you being the wordsmith that you are and the writer that you are. He says, Michael does, Bad Sisters on Apple TV, five sisters dealing with one of the sisters' evil husband uh, is something to see, and you can see it from the comfort of your own home. He says, Padre Pio is uh, uh, not good, uh, and uh, he would discourage uh, any trips to the theater to see Padre Pio, as he does with The Boogeyman, the scary movie that he felt didn't have enough scare in it. He felt there was not enough boogie in The Boogeyman and not enough uh, scare. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Mythology is, the mythology is weak there. I, it's very, very thin. Yeah. And uh, finally, though, he did like and recommends Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. However, he emphasizes C- Spider-Man inside the Spider-Verse before no. you see... Oh, no? Into into the Spider-Verse. And by oh. the way, I didn't like it. I loved it. Oh, okay. All right. So see uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse before you see Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, and you will love the ride. Wow, Michael, you've said a lot here today. You've also noted two columns in the Marina Times, which I'm particularly excited to pick up. And you can find the Marina Times online as well, the marinatimes.com. Michael, uh, any last comments before you say goodbye to a loving audience? Well, um, go Giants, number one. Number two, um, nobody puts baby in a corner, but you actually <laughs> pushed me to the very limits of the week's programming by dumping me at this point in time. But love you. Uh, love the audience. Uh, everybody have a great weekend. Happy Pride to our gay friends. And, uh, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye, Michael. He comes and goes to the rainbow. A loud harp. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped. And please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.